Welcome to the Unstuck and Unstoppable podcast where we help you move your life forward. If you've ever wanted to make sure that you're living a life without regret and that you're focused on what really matters, then you're listening to the right episode of yes. our podcast today. I'm your host, Jim Giles, and I'm here with Jolea Garza. Hey. So excited <laughs> this about This is going to be a great episode. It's going to be a great episode. Yeah. So pumped. We're going to be talking about living a life without regret. Come on. Have you ever regretted anything? Yeah. You know, I think it's so, I, well, one, yes. <laughs> but then two, I think that so many people have. And yes. so I'm really excited to unpack this today and talk through some of the top regrets that people have. Absolutely. Well, today we're going to be talking about chapter four of a book that I just wrote. It's called Unstuck and Unstoppable. If you don't have a, a pre-ordered copy yet or have get not it. pre-ordered your copy, yeah. go get it. Go to the website, yeah. jimkiles.com. Yeah, you Check can it out. Look, it so they, I'm so excited. <laughs> yes, what do you think, Kevin? We got our cameraman over there. Yes. You like it, Kevin? We're so thrilled to have you. Give us a thumbs Everybody up. Give I love Kevin it. a thumbs up <laughs> if you're watching through video or listening through podcast. He is our technical director who helps us with all things technical. Come on, praise God. Uh, Kevin's got his copy, and we're so excited. It's mm -hmm. an advanced reading copy. Uh, but it's released publicly November 8th. November and 8th. So it, we're getting close. You we're know, we're in the close. month of August. Like we are almost there and I'm super excited. Super excited. Yeah. And uh, here we are, super pumped. Um, we're talking about life without regret. Yeah. Um, in today, uh, it's been heavy on my heart, the fact that we live life, but sometimes we're not living the right life. Mm -hmm. Every day time passes, but just because another day comes and goes does not mean that we're focused on the right thing. Yeah. And as I was doing the work on this book, Unstuck and Unstoppable, uh, it was very fascinating. I came across an uh, actually a book. Mm -hmm. uh, you know the author of yeah. the lady who Bronnie I was talking Ware. about. Yeah, Bronnie yeah. Ware. Mm -hmm. She's an Australian nurse, and she spent several years taking care of patients during the last 12 uh, right. months of their 12 weeks of their life, so mm. when they're on hospice. And she actually ended up writing a book um, in Australia. It's called The Top Five Regrets of, of the dying. dying. Yeah. And so as I was researching the book, really, really just asking God to help me craft in a book uh, whatever I needed to help people become unstuck and mm -hmm. then become unstoppable. This book was so fascinating because she said as she was taking care of people that were dying, right. there were reoccurring regrets that they had. Regrets. Yeah. Isn't that fascinating? She said mm -hmm. there was so much the same that it's it was shocking. And so she ended up creating a book and wrote about it. Mm -hmm. And what I found so fascinating was that throughout the book, uh, one of the ways that we become unstoppable is that we learn to focus on four primary building blocks of life. And so really the first one is, is discovering your identity. Right. Second one is uh, living purpose. with purpose, yep. what I'm supposed to be doing right now. The, the third part is living a life of vision, uh -huh. which means I'm going somewhere, not right. just drifting. <laughs> and then the, the fourth one, which is what I really thought the whole book was going to be about, was, was paradigms. subconscious par yep. yeah, mm -hmm. uh, subconscious pattern of thought paradigms. Mm -hmm. and, um, but what I found fascinating in her book, and you and I, as we've read through this. how they this, all align They together. all align. Yes. That those That's four so building great. blocks of life can be found in the five regrets, regrets of the yeah. dying. I love this so much. You know, even for me, and I, I often have this prayer. In fact, I was even praying, praying it the other day. You know, God, I just want to live out my fullest potential. That's right. You know, I want to not only just do great things, but I want to do everything that I've been called to do. That's right. Um, and this was probably one of my favorite chapters reading the book, you know, the few times that I've read the book. Um, and I love it because truly, if, if I can avoid some of these regrets, now. you know, or start to avoid yes. some of these regrets or be aware of, of the things that people have done in their lives that, right. that they wish they hadn't, man, what wow. a big impact. And I think that when you identify these regrets, when you don't live and have these regrets, then you work, live closer to your purpose. That's and right. I'm so excited about 100% that. percent agree. And yeah. it's fascinating because in her study, and she just found, you're talking about construction workers. Uh-huh. Doctors, lawyers, CEOs, men, everything. women, yeah. didn't really matter the career field right. or path, didn't even matter necessarily the geography or the way they were raised, their background, the, the reoccurring regrets were all the same. Right. And so the true. only caveat that I would say to this is, and, and if you've been listening to us for a while, you know, I'm a pastor. We get to pastor a church. Jolea is the executive pastor mm -hmm. here, leads the church and the staff. Um, the only thing that I would just say the warning would be 
these regrets are, 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 are things that we need to focus on not having ourself, but it'll never replace the greatest thing that we have to do, in my opinion, is have a relationship with God. Right. So I can focus on, hey, I'm not going to have these regrets. I'm going to try to live a life That's great. without these regrets in my life. But if you don't connect to the one who created you, which we believe God yeah. is the uh, designer of humanity, and he is the one that gave us breath in our lungs and life in our bodies. Mm-hmm. And so you can focus on not having the regrets, regrets but if you're not connected to the one that created so you, great. then you're going to miss it anyway. Yeah. It's like building a ladder and find out the end of your life the ladder's Come leaning on. against the wrong building yeah and i love your book because there's even an opportunity yes. to take that step yep. um and a guided opportunity at that and that's so right. man again yeah. pre-order this book it. it's that's so right. good <laughs> well and I, i'm so excited because even in the book i tell my story yeah. you know i hadn't always lived for god yeah. hadn't always been a pastor um, but I found God in my early 20s and just radically changed my life. And mm-hmm. I'm a businessman before I was a pastor, still currently do business and other opportunities. And so it's not just the fact that I chose a career path of ministry. It's the fact that I needed God because I was desperate. That's great. And I just want to encourage you, if you if you want to know more about that, email us. We'd love to connect Absolutely. with you and grab the book. You know, we'll lead you through uh, the the guided tour of hey, how do you begin yeah. a relationship with God? So hey, let's dive into the five regrets because that's what I'm I'm excited about it. Me too. The first regret that that yeah. she found was the first one is I wish I had the the courage to live a life true to myself and not the life that others expected me wow. to live. True to myself, Ooh. not to live up to the expectations yes. of others. And you think, man, I'm an adult. <laughs> I don't care what people think. Right, all the people who are like, I, I live without I'm a, rebel. a care. Yes, yes. <laughs> but but and is. yet you will call yourself the black yes. sheep when you make those decisions, yes. right? You're like, oh, I'm the, I've called myself the black sheep of the family sometimes. I didn't do the things that I was uh, supposed to do. Uh, or, yeah. And, and people find themselves, and even as a black sheep, it's like, I will never do that because my dad said you would right, or your right. mom said you would. Mm-hmm. Well, you're really living up to the negative, right. the opposite of what this right. is. So and you're still not, living not about that. a yeah. false life. Yeah. And really, when you pin this regret down, what we discovered, and really at the very core of it, is that we have this regret because mm-hmm. we never discovered who we really were. So good. Yeah. Your true identity. Yeah. And so as I, I just want to help those who are watching or listening, mm-hmm. you know, the first thing that you've got to do if you're going to become unstoppable and you're going to get unstuck is discover the identity that God God gave you and then begin to live that out regardless yeah. of what people expect, and what other people think what people say yeah. what people think and just a word to all my pleasers out there yeah. so that we have two different yeah. ends of the spectrum you have your rebellious yeah. over here yeah. who are like I'm gonna do the opposite anyways but then you also have your pleasers and I think a lot of pleasers actually and if you know to identify yourself do you love doing things for other people yep. do you care deeply about what yep. other people think feel and experience when you help them and all of those things so so if you are a pleaser you know one of the things you have to learn is that pleasing people does not define who you are yeah. and a lot of times that is so deeply linked on the right. inside of who you are yeah, it's yeah. like I can't I, let I'm them great down. I'm great at taking care of this person right. I'm great at doing all yeah. these things and that becomes the identity that's and right. so long as I'm living the way they I'm want nurture, me to, that's I'm right. happy. I'm happy. Yes. But you're living a false life, right. a you're false not, identity. You're, not, yeah. you're carrying someone else's weight. Yeah. And then you get to the end of your life, and that's yeah. what happens. And you think that's who you are. And that's so right. what this regret is saying is that a lot of times we've mm. lived our lives being defined by what everybody else wanted us that's to be, right. what everybody else thought we were, versus going back and figuring out who God is actually created us to be i love what she said the courage Mm -hmm. the courage to live a life true to myself so good and you just have to realize you're not gonna make everybody happy right but you will become truly alive (laughs) and i just want to encourage you hey we got great resources jimkyles.com go Mm -hmm. check it out Uh, we've got some worksheets to even help you uncover someone says i don't know my identity Mm -hmm. well go to the website there we've got a a document that'll actually just begin who am i right you got to answer you got to answer the question who am i take yeah. apart and take away everything or, you know the money the house so good everything by yourself with nothing else who am i yeah and it's one of the toughest questions i write about it in the book there's a, there's a whole chapter to identity um it's the toughest question i ever had to answer as a young businessman at, at the age of 22 mm-hmm. i had uh, my, my twin brother and i owned seven properties right. i opened a restaurant at the age of 23 24 we had over 30 employees and then through a series of of events uh, we lost everything, right. 
And I'll never forget coming face to face with this question. Mm. And it's really the journey. The book is a 20 year journey right. of what God taught me 20 years ago that has brought me to this moment. And the question I couldn't answer was, who am I? I'm mm. like, well, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a failure. I'm wow. this. And as I know, take away those things. Who are you? And yeah. that's the question. When you answer it, yeah. will keep you from living this life that's of That's great. And there's a process. There's such yes. a process. You know, I even think about layers. Yeah, it's layer after layer. So this is not an overnight. Nope. You have to be willing to take the step so and actually good. move forward and, and go through this process. But even for me, you know, I even think about growing up, I was in a house with doctors and lawyers. And, and so the expectation <laughs> was that you will be a doctor, a doctor and lawyer. And that is that's all. Right. incredible and so I had to learn so you know in high school I I did debate and so I was traveling I competed nationally um, on a state level and I competed well I was a great debater Um, come on at the movie (laughs) but um, but I did really well and so what I learned though because I was I would always say what my parents told me was I'm gonna go and and be pre-law I'm gonna go to school and be a be a lawyer and so every time anybody would ask me it's like what are you gonna be I'm gonna be a lawyer right just because that's what was was expected of me and (laughs) going through five years of, of being in that program, I actually learned I really hate all of the reading and research <laughs> that goes into preparing for these That's events awesome. that I was a part of. But what I do love is speaking. And wow. so there was even in that moment, just a, a, a diving in and an uncovering of I may not be a lawyer or that might not be what I'm passionate about, but I am a great speaker. And I do love that. So and there was an identifying of that. And so and it it's took a process courage. for everybody. Yeah, and it's yeah. a process. Yeah, and it, was a, it took a lot it of courage, courage I know. for me to say, this is not the path for me, but well, I'm way more fulfilled now than I think I would have been had ever. I taken that step. Well, and we're praying that you have the courage to take steps, mm-hmm. and we want to be on the journey with yeah. you. The second regret was she said, I wish, this is what they said, I wish I hadn't worked so hard. Ooh, <laughs> this was a big one for isn't me. That interesting? This was a huge one for me. Yeah, worked 100%. so hard. Yeah. The, you, you think, man, I, I'm just going to work so hard. I'm yeah. going to provide for my family. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get to the dreams and the goals yeah. that I have. But it says she was shocked mm-hmm. at how deeply regretful these people were at having worked so hard yeah. and their entire existence being wrapped around Yeah, their work. entire purpose. So you said something in the book, and I want to read this. Um, it says that there's nothing wrong with working hard, but when the time, when your time gets out of balance, it's often because you don't truly understand your purpose. Wow. I thought that was so good. I actually have a note in my book, in my copy of the book, um, because I was rereading this when I was on maternity leave. You know, I had yeah. a, a baby back in February, and it was so funny, but there were a couple of weeks and I wrote it down in your book where I said, I felt like I had completely lost my identity because I was not working wow. and I didn't know who I was anymore. Um, and so being at home, not being able to, to work, not being able to connect with the things that like I was used to doing, there was a really tough few weeks where I was just like, who am I? Do I have any value? <laughs> am I worth anything anymore? That's right. Um, and I so remember this, that season. Yeah. What an interesting season or what an interesting regret um, and one that I've personally experienced that I don't want to experience for the rest of my life. <laughs> well, and I, I love to what what you need to know and what, what I'm hearing in this and, mm-hmm. and I write about in the book is purpose is multidimensional. Yeah. So you find purpose in what you do, but that's not the only place you find your that's purpose. Great. You have purpose in your family. Mm-hmm. You have purpose in your marriage. Yeah. You have purpose in your ministry. Come on. You know, I'm a, I'm a believer. And so if you're a believer, mm-hmm. what is your purpose in your local church? Right. Are you leading a small group? That's Are you great. a part of a serve team? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that's where it's just, we've got to recognize what the regret was. I found all my purpose in all one thing. of it. And yes. I worked too hard. Yeah. And and had I been and and I almost hate this word, but mm. it's true. Had I been more balanced, mm-hmm. you know, I don't think there's real balance. I, I think call it rhythm. There is rhythms. no balance. Yes. There is simply rhythm. But, but what it's saying <laughs> is that when you look kind of like at the will of life, mm-hmm. it, it's just okay. I've got purpose for my family. Mm-hmm. I've got purpose for my marriage. And yeah, and I think so, a lot of people live their lives like going to their nine to five or showing up to work, and they are. This is my purpose. My purpose is right. to just work That's and it. provide. And, and, and your purpose is much more than. Much than bigger just than that. Working and providing. Yep. So take an assessment. 
Where's mm-hmm. all my purpose coming from? Is it just this one area? That's great. And, it, and it's hard to step back when you're winning. Mm-hmm. Oh, you yeah. Know, especially you're successful <laughs> where I was an entrepreneur. I mean, yeah. it's like the more Everything's wins you get. Everything's going great. It's going yeah. great. You want to give more. Yeah. And what we're saying is just maybe slow the pace. That's great. And get a little more balance of where your total purpose in life comes from mm-hmm. so that you don't have this regret. Because the goal of today is we don't want you to live a life with regret. Get to the end of your life and say, man, right. I wish I wouldn't have. So Third good. regret says, I wish I'd had the courage to express my feelings. Wow. It's a big one. That is a big one. Yeah. So, you know, what she's saying is the fact that the way you feel really matters Mm -hmm. and that we're afraid to actually tell people how we feel because we don't want to be rejected or some people just don't want the confrontation. It's it's funny. I love this. You know, I'm cracking up because I'm like, if you're ever on social media, I feel like everybody (laughs) expresses their feelings about everything. But I I think maybe it's not just opinions, but it's actual feelings. Feelings. Like, are you not just airing how you think or or your opinion about things and, and what's happening in our world on social media, but are you having actual conversations with the people that you love, with, with your kids and, and telling, them how you feel about them telling them how you feel when things aren't going great telling them how you feel when things are going good and i think that's probably the disconnect well and i I would even put a a word around it vulnerability yes yes so it's Mm -hmm. we live we live in a very uh, hard society Mm -hmm. where everybody has opinions but nobody's vulnerable yeah so what we like to do is we like to we like to shoot at people Mm -hmm. and then duck and cover and pop shots you know it's just constantly And what we're looking for, and and even here, is that, man, I've got a place where I can be vulnerable, yeah. and I've got relationships with people. Here, well, here's what I'd open. say, real relationships. Yes. So I, I would just say, this didn't actually, this one wasn't specifically for a um, place in your life like purpose, identity, mm-hmm. but, but what it is talking about is relationships, Yes. and that's the key to life. So what true. I've always seen is relationships are the currency of life, yeah. and so you've got to have people that, that whether it's at, at your job, whether it's at church and your small group, and I like to have groups in all those areas, yeah. but you're doing life together, mm-hmm. and real relationships, right. not just where so only true. one person Surface, shares. Yeah. yeah, and you're just listening or kind of just And you never have in. any disagreements. Right, I would right. say if you're in a relationship or have relationships where nobody's ever disagreed you've probably never been fully <laughs> open and honest that. and transparent and yeah. vulnerable there's a great book by actually one of your dear friends kevin gerald yeah. um naked Master and kevin unafraid gerald. um so and good. i absolutely love this book he talks all about vulnerability and the risk that it takes to be vulnerable yes. but so there's so many rewards in being vulnerable yep. um and being okay with sharing how you feel about certain that is situations. so good and the thing that will help you with being vulnerable and i guess this is the one that that does fit with it it will if you have a vision for where you're going Mm -hmm. then it you realize if they won't be vulnerable and i can't be vulnerable they don't meet the vision of where i'm going Mm -hmm. and so i'm gonna i'm gonna find some new friends i'm gonna find some people that i can because my vision is to have healthy life-giving relationships even in your marriage so like if you have vision i love don't change your marriage though you You just got to work on it well no 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 no. (laughs) so (laughs) you talked last week about affair proofing your marriage and a lot of the communication that that goes into that too And the truth is, if you have a vision of we're going to have a healthy marriage, and we're right. gonna, then you have to communicate. You have, you have to, to be vulnerable. vulnerable. You have to. That's so good. Yes. Well, and so we're, we're going to work on that vision, and then we're going to find the right people uh-huh. that help us get to that place where we can have authentic, open communication and relationships where we be our true selves yeah. and express our feelings. That's great. Not always just our opinions. <laughs> Number four. I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. Wow. This was another hard one for me. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm living life with so many regrets. <laughs> <laughs> I really, because I, and I live this regret because of the, I wish I hadn't worked so hard, yeah. you know? And I think, you know, maybe you're a three like me, which threes on the Enneagram are performers and we're all about doing great work and right. we'll just kind of <laughs> push everybody else aside so long as we can get a, a lot done. Um, and so the truth is though, this is such a big one. I am often just praying that God would send me great friends and send me great relationships, but then also that I'll have the ability to maintain those relationships and check in. It takes a lot of intentionality for me. (laughs) Well, and there's no easy way around this. This Mm -hmm. is something that I I have actually done a pretty good job in my Mm -hmm. life. You know, I'm always worried about people that have best friends. They just met someone and they're your best friend. It's like, yeah, I've got friends that I've had for 10, 15, 20 years. And it's just one of those things, if I, if I could just speak into it, um, is that you've got a calendar 
those moments. You know, right. every six months, every three months, I've set aside time where I put it in my calendar that I'm calling, you know, right. I've got like Kim Tell Glasgow has been right. a dear friend many, many, many years, yeah. you know, and I could go on and on and tell, uh, you probably know a lot of yeah, them. I bring absolutely. them here. You bring them here and you we get allow to talk them to be a part of what we're yeah. doing. Yeah. And I just think that if you understand, you can get everything you want out of life, mm -hmm. but then find yourself surrounded by an amazing or on an amazing island right. all by yourself. Yep. So true. And I think the so same true. is true with your kids and your mm -hmm. family. Just because your blood doesn't mean that the relationships are yeah. going to last. I, I even would say one of the big regrets that I hear from people being a pastor at the end part of their life mm. is they didn't spend as much time staying That's connected great. with their kids or yeah. their cousins or their parents. Yeah. And so really saying, look, I'm on a journey and I'm not going to be on a journey by myself. What's that saying? If you want to go fast, go alone. Yep. <laughs> you want to go far, go, go together. together. Yep. And so we want to go together. We want to mm -hmm. keep in touch. And, and you'd be surprised. Sometimes you're like, well, I think it's going to be awkward, but it's not awkward. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, many people are like, oh, my God, you, you got back in touch with me. You right. stayed connected with yep. me. And so go back and, and do whatever it takes to rebuild and rekindle yeah. some of those this old is, relationships. This is friends and family. I love that you mentioned family, too. You know, for me, I love that word intentionality. Um, intentionality is so important. I've This has been a journey I've personally been on over the past few years is is whenever somebody's on my heart, just texting them and That's reaching right. out. Um, even with family, we do a couple of things. We have dinner every night together, um, you know, and so it's the intentionality of putting the what phones away, checking out and checking in with our kids. Um, and then even, you know, I have grandparents and people that, you know, it would, <laughs> it sometimes right. it seems inconvenient to go visit them, but man, to man. take the time to go and see your family so members good. and go and connect with them is just so important. So important. Hey, mm -hmm. and now we're on the last regret, the, yep. the regret number five. Yep, I wish I had let myself be happy. That was so fascinating yeah. to me. You I know, circled the word let. Let. Yeah. <laughs> the, to, I was so fascinated by let myself be happier. Mm -hmm. and, and this does fit into uh, the, the, the one of the four building blocks of life. Right. This would be your old pattern Parents. of thought, yeah. your old paradigms, yeah. your old subconscious pattern That's of thought. Great. And so what I found here, and even I go into actually two chapters, the, the chapter 10 and chapter 11 uh -huh. of the book that and talk specifically about patterns of thought, paradigm, mm -hmm. is that you can have all the right things in life and yet internally mm. not allow yourself to enjoy what not only you achieved, but God allowed you so and good. gave to you to achieve. Wow. How many people have... Uh, you know, I was thinking about even marriage. It's like, man, well, they're going to leave me or mm. what? It's too good to be true. Right. Or, oh, my gosh. I'm just waiting on the waiting other on the other drop. Right. Yes. And so yeah. you sabotage. And yeah. we talked about this, you know, so, probably yeah, yeah. last so month. Yeah, Self-sabotage yeah. is that you go in and you sabotage mm -hmm. what really should be enjoyed. Wow. 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 I just love that. I just said it's a choice. It is. It is a choice. And here's the thing, it, it, but here's what I would say. It's a choice to begin to work on it because for some of you, it's a subconscious pattern of thought, mm -hmm. which means to you, you didn't even know That's it was great. a choice and you've never even realized, hey, it's been like this, but I can change it. Mm -hmm. And so I would just encourage you. There was the National Science Foundation did mm -hmm. a study and the study said that we have anywhere from 16 to 60 right. or 12,000 12 to 60,000 60, yeah. thoughts in a day and of those uh, 95 percent are negative yeah and then 80 percent are repetitive <laughs> yeah can you imagine wow. so subconsciously whatever trauma you experienced as so a kid true. maybe trauma in a relationship mm -hmm. as a young adult if you don't deal with it whether it's your marriage whether it's your work whether it's your kids uh, in every facet fine financially, whatever it is, right. no matter what you get, it'll never be enough. Right. You'll never be satisfied. You'll never be happy. And here yeah. she's saying, man, had I dealt with this, man, life would have been so much better. I'd be at the end of my life, not right. having just lived, mm -hmm. but lived a happy and fulfilled life. Yeah. And it's the retraining to be able to see the good in life and right. see the blessings that you have. At the end of the day, I, I'm not going to just say, oh, you'll be happy when you learn to, when everything is good and when no. things are working out, <laughs> but to learn to be happy in, in the, the ups and of, downs and in the yes. midst of, of all of the storms. I love that saying, you're either walking into a storm in the middle of a storm or walking out of a That's storm right. or you're going in the same. <laughs> 
same cycle. <laughs> and that's the truth. And so you have to learn what it what it is uh, to to be happy and be content. I love the word content. Yes. Even when things don't look the way you thought they were supposed to, or even when you don't have everything that you you would like. Um, and I think that word contentment is big, but it all goes back to paradigms. It all goes back to how you experience that's things right. and what <laughs> what filter absolutely you experience. Things well, and in. I would encourage you if you want to go back. I, I talked about this on a mm -hmm. Sunday service. That's you can great. go to our YouTube page, mm -hmm. Anchor Ben TX. Yeah. And then look up Unstuck and Unstoppable. And there was a message that I did called Subconscious Pattern of Thought, your, your paradigm. Mm -hmm. um, and I really talked about that here, here's not only how it affects you, but how you can really begin to change and tip the, the, the change the, the way you think. At That's least great. it's the process. Yes. And then also go to jimgiles.com. We just uploaded a um, thinking sheet. Yeah, and so I'm super excited that. about yeah. it. And so what we want you to do is just take an assessment of yes. what are the thoughts that you're thinking throughout <laughs> the day, which is a little tough. I've yeah, done it. Great. You don't even realize right. what you don't realize. Right. And so then that way so you get good. to say, okay, these are positive, these are negative. Mm -hmm. And then the key is you can't change everything, but what's the primary th pattern That's of thought so that is sabotaging your happiness? Yeah. And I love what you said. Uh, trials always come. Mm -hmm. They're always going to happen. Yep. So how can I stay joyful and content and happy even in the in midst, the midst of, of yeah. what's, what's happening that may be a delay? I remember even right. the book, we were going to release it last year, but there was a delay. We yep. didn't. And I remember feeling depressed and angry and frustrated, but now I'm more excited than ever because right. we've got the podcast. We, we actually updated a few things in this book. And so, so there's great. so many cool things mm -hmm. that are going to happen. But I saw how God took a situation that was very frustrating, mm -hmm. and now there's great joy to see, wow, he was working it out so right. it would be better than ever. Right. I, I just sometimes I was like, I kick myself all the times that I was upset and frustrated and angry and sad and laid in bed, and this, you know, and <laughs> be, for things that weren't working out right <laughs> in the moment versus just being like, it's okay. God, like, we're, got God's this. got we're it. You know, it. we're going to make it through. And if I knew God's track so record good. before, he has always come through. Oh, and I feel yeah. like that's a big piece of, of being piece. happy. But even... Yeah on the thinking sheet, I love that it's just helping you identify the thoughts right. because a big half of the battle is just knowing just the knowing thoughts. It's thinking. not necessarily having every solution to how no. to fix the thinking, but if you know it, you can begin to attack it. Begin to attack great. that. And then yeah. I always look at this, what's the one thing that if I addressed right now would make the biggest difference in my life? Mm -hmm. And that's what you want to do. And I just want to encourage you, go back and listen to the regrets. Yeah. Uh, there should be in the show notes as well. And so let's start working on this. So we get to the end of our life mm -hmm. and we say, man, we live a lot life well lived yep. and uh, we're excited to help you with that now a few things as we end we have an ebook at the website help i'm stuck yeah. if you're feeling stuck right now it's absolutely free just go and download it it's about i think a 12 page workbook yep. Yep. it'll help you just Super identify simple. some ways that mm -hmm. you might have gotten stuck and then four things you can do right now to get unstuck and it. so we just want to help you move your life forward um, then just go subscribe if, you, yeah. if you're listening to this for the first time would you subscribe yeah. uh, we'd love to be delivered to however you consume your content each and every week Absolutely. Um, we always want you to teach the content as yeah. well. I love this. Take something home to your spouse or take one this into your you workplace, take it to your kids and just share one thing that you learned this week on today's podcast. Yeah. And then we'd love for you to engage in the online community. We're mm -hmm. a Facebook page. We're getting a lot of people uh, joining us and engaging. We'd love to hear your story, what's yeah. happening and stay connected with you. Yeah. And we always love your feedback. We want to yeah. hear how this is impacting your life. So post a review, post share a your review. thoughts um, wherever you listen to this podcast. Yeah. So many of you have already done on that it just yeah. keeps us encouraged and it just helps us in the rankings we we sure love that and then last share the podcast would you yeah. just find one person that you could share the podcast with and help them get unstuck and become, become. unstoppable in it. their life well we're excited we'll see you next week bye see you bye -bye. next time